Chapter 35 in That's the Joint, a Hip Hop Studies Reader, features an essay by Richard Schusterman titled, This is a Sampling Sport, Digital Sampling, Rap Music, and the Law and Cultural Production. In this piece, Schusterman defends the artistic integrity of rap music. He posits the genre as a postmodern popular art that challenges artistic critiques and modernist conventions. He notes that rap's cultural roots belong to the black underclass of American society and that its militant black pride and thematizing of the ghetto experience represent a threatening siren to that society's complacent status quo. Schusterman cites some common critiques that reflect the beliefs of those who attempt to delegitimize rap as an art form. These critiques include the often spoken, not sung vocal deliveries, the heavy presence of sampling pre-recorded music rather than original compositions, and the crude, raucous lyrics. These critiques remind me of a hilariously misinformed take by none other than everyone's favorite music expert and scholar, Ben Shapiro. Take a look. School, the, there are three elements to music. There is harmony, there, mm -hmm. is, there is melody, and there is rhythm. Okay. And rap only fulfills one of these, the rhythm section. That there's not a lot of melody and there's not a lot of harmony. Mm. And thus, it is basically effectively spoken rhythm. And so it's not actually a form of music. It's a, it's a form of rhythmic speaking. Uh, and, <laughs> and thus, I, and so beyond the... Now, this closed-minded argument reflects a rigid, outdated, and also fundamentally incorrect assessment of what constitutes a piece of music. Schusterman offers another defense of rap that could be used as a rebuttal to this assertion. In his essay, he states, in contrast to an aesthetic based on devotional worship of a fixed, untouchable work, hip-hop offers the pleasures of deconstructive art, the thrilling beauty of dismembering and rapping over old works to create new ones, dismantling the prepackaged and wearily familiar into something stimulatingly different. This deconstructive art he speaks of is rooted directly in the practice of sampling. Now, one prolific producer comes to mind when considering the vast creative possibilities provided by sampling previous musical works. That man is none other than DJ Premier. Born in Houston, Texas, Premier, who also comprises one half of the Gangstar duo, has an untouchable catalog of production credits. He is responsible for timeless hip-hop anthems and is a key pioneer of the boom-bap sound. Primo specializes in making beats that exemplify what I would refer to as ambient storytelling. He has an ability to chop up multiple samples and rework them into something that is miraculously, indisputably original. He channels the upbringing and environment that his collaborator hails from, as well as his own, to construct a beat that speaks for itself. Despite the vocals being essential to a track's artistic value, oftentimes if you remove the lyrics, Primo's beats tell you everything you need to know. Take for instance a classic Nas track and one of my all-time favorites from his debut LP, New York State of Mind. Have a listen to the instrumental during the track's introduction. Yeah. yeah, straight out the fucking dungeons of rap, where fake niggas don't make it back. I don't know how to start this. Rappers are monkey flipping with the funky rhythm. I be kicking, musician, inflicting composition of pain. I'm like Scarface sniffing cocaine, holding an M16. So for this track, DJ Premier samples "Flight Time" by Donald Byrd for those piercing horn hits with the primary piano melody source being Mind Rain by Joe Chambers. In Mind Rain, the keys sound mellow, but in the greater context of the beat and Nas's bars, they sound grimy yet elegant. This is more than just a well-constructed and mixed piece of music. This is an auditory translation of the realities of a young man living and struggling in the Queensbridge projects. Schusterman indicates rap's potential to be intellectually rewarding, not merely because of the stimulation linked to its polysemic complexity, but also because of its philosophical insights. One can find multiple examples of these insights in New York's state of mind alone. Coinciding with this beat that exudes an energy that exemplifies New York's street life in this time period, these lyrics are a direct look into the life that Nas and people like him live on a daily basis, a life that is entirely foreign to elitist music critics and executives. Here are a few examples. Was full of children probably couldn't see as high as I be. It's like the game ain't the same. Got younger niggas pulling the triggers, bringing fame to their name and claim some corners. Crews without guns in their wives' basin. It drops deep as it does in my breath. I never sleep, huh? Cause sleep is the cousin of death. Beyond the walls of intelligence, life is defined. I think of crime when I'm in a New York state of mind. State of mind. State of mind. New York state of mind. Life is parallel to hell, but I must maintain it be prosperous. Though we live dangerous, cops could just arrest me, blaming us. We're held like hostages. It's only right that I was born to use mics. 
Another one of my favorite DJ Premier beats is Kick in the Door by the Notorious B.I.G. Now the original horn sample was extracted from I Put a Spell on You by Screamin' Jay Hawkins. In the original track, the horns sound mischievous, almost a little melancholy. But with a slight pitch alteration from Primo accompanied by some hard percussion, the horns now sound heavy, viciously aggressive, sinister. The bell sound effect Premiere includes on every alternating bar is genius. It resembles the sound of a doorbell, which is thematically fitting. Again, this beat tells you everything Biggie is about before he even opens his mouth to start rapping. He's kicking in your door, and he's waving the 4-4. There's nothing more to it. Biggie! Uh-huh. Uh uh, this goes out to Big you. you. This goes out to you and you and you. Big and you. Big this goes out to you. This goes out to you. This goes out to you and you and you. Uh, your reign on the top was short like. The One of the most compelling points that Schusterman makes in this essay is that, and I quote, "There is no compelling reason to limit the rap's meaning to explicit authorial intentions." Its meaning is also a function of its language. The background samples are not just a blank canvas for the rapper. Their histories and musical influences coexist with the lyrics and revamped production. They can even represent a closer look at the inspiration behind modern artists. For instance, I've heard Jodeci sampled frequently in the past couple of decades. Now, Jodeci existed at a time in which rappers who were currently in their 20s and 30s would have been in their youth, thus explaining its use and its significance to that age group. Tristerman supports the idea that classic records can be appreciated in unison with the alternate applications of their sounds used by rappers and producers today. He describes this dynamic as a social product beyond the determining control of the individual author. In the face of modern critiques regarding artistic integrity in music, I'd say nothing validates hip-hop culture more than this idea.